This audio fiction may contain elements not suitable for children. Listener discretion is advised. Dagon, Nikon, and Alejandro step into the low tide. The others wait for them on the beach. Follow me. How? By walking where I walk. Dagon walks through the ship's wall. Well now, that is useful. Nikon walks where Dagon had moments before. He disappears into the ship as well. Alejandro takes a deep breath. All right. This can suddenly happen. Alejandro walks the same path as the other two men. He disappears into the side of the ship. He manifests inside the ship beside Nikon and Dagon. The three of them then walk quietly from room to room, looking for signs of life. They come to a lone room with a man and a woman in a large cage. The two prisoners are asleep. This is what you expected to find? (sighs) Sadly, it is. We need to find the key. Alejandro produces a lockpick. He steps in front of the cage and works on the lock. This is why I insisted on bringing Ali with me. You don't need a key? Not when you can manipulate the inner mechanisms of a lock. Alejandro stops fidgeting with the lock. He opens the door to the cage. If we don't want more people coming here or knowing about this place, then what are we to do about them? Carrying them out like this and just telling them they were rescued. They don't need the details. I suppose that makes sense. But how are we to get rid of the rest of the crew? Setis has some ideas with that. We need to return to the land first, though. Dagon picks up the large man with ease. Nikon cradles the young woman in his arms. Then he lifts her. Dagon leads the way through the solid surface of the ship, back to the shallow water in the early morning tide. Nikon and Alejandro then follow. Set him down. We'll bring them with us as promised. Thank you for this and keeping her secrets. Dagon sets down the large man, then he hurries into the jungle. What are they going to do about the ship? I am not certain. They seem confident that the ship will never return to these shores, though. So they probably have something in mind that worked in the past. I feel certain of that. The guard walks into the room where the prisoners are kept. She opens the door, sets the tray on a table, and then turns toward the empty cage. The crew sit around in the galley, discussing what to do regarding their still-missing crew members. Perhaps another search party is in order? What? No! Why would we do that? The first group to leave is still gone. Yes, but they're our crew. I'm not stepping foot off the ship. Uh, There's something wrong with this place, this island. Um, What? What are you talking about? Can't you feel it? No. This place is just taking people. You're being superstitious. That's nonsense. Didn't we come here because of magic? We came here because of a rumor about magic, yes. This magic is dark. Can't you feel it? That's why bad things kept happening and will keep happening. We need to leave. That's the fear of the unknown getting to you. Albina rushes into the galley. Help! It's the ship! Albina hurries out of the galley before anybody can react verbally to her. The others follow behind her onto the deck of the ship. Not our fresh water. Get water from the sea. Vera, Effie, and Daeth join the other frantic crew members on the deck. Once there, they find the ship on fire in random places. The flames are being fanned and smothered by blankets and crew members desperate to snuff out the flames. What? What happened? Where did the fire come from? Nobody knows. Flames just started out of nowhere. After many long, terrifying moments, the flames are finally extinguished. See? This place has bad magic. We need to go before something worse happens. Later that day, after the other ship had left the bay, 
Imon and the young sages are on the border between the jungle and the beach. We thank you for agreeing to protect us and magic itself. We are happy to do it. We are, yes. Magic needs protecting from those who might abuse it. It was exciting to find out magic really exists. <laughs> I suppose in your situation, I might agree. You may want to hurry home before the rescued prisoners come too. Or before your father returns for us. True, they may see you speaking with us. No need to worry. We will be returning soon enough. Dagon hands Nikon a large weaved basket. Inside the basket was fruit collected from the island's trees and shrubs. This is a lot of food. This is a gift for your help. Since you protected us and you promised to not tell others about us. Really, truly, thank you. This is very generous. We promise. We're going to do our best to protect magic and to keep you from dealing with outsiders. Thank you. We know you don't have to do this, and you don't owe us anything. But you protect magic, and we want to as well. <sighs> this has been a strange few days, but I'm glad to have met you. I'm glad for that too. As you suggested, we need to return home before anybody knows about us, or magic. Come now, young sages. The sages and visitors say additional farewells. They then depart into the jungle. We should make another campfire. Get ready to board the ship when Dad comes for us. Right. We should get going. Mm-hmm. Zui was right. This has been a strange few days. Hmm. Strange. But this is what makes things in life interesting. Pythias stirs. He had been exhausted and hungry long before he fell asleep. He opens his eyes, feeling the blinding light above him. He flinches when he sees the light from the sun almost directly. Outside? How? Pythias looks around him. Nikon waves. Good morning. Uh, who are you? Where am I? You're on a beach. We'll be boarding my father's ship soon. My name is Nikan Zand. We found you on board a slaver ship and brought you and the woman being held with you with us. You... You freed me. We did, yes. You don't have to worry about those slavers again. Pythias looks around at the others present. I don't remember being taken. Alejandro pulls his steak out of the ground. He begins eating the roasted fruit. Pythia stares at the food. Malia hands the large man her steak with roasted fruit skewered on it. Help yourself. After your ordeal, you must be hungry. Pythia hurries and eats the roasted fruit. Malia skewers more fruit on the steak and positions the steak to cook the fruit. And this fruit is very good. Especially cooked. Alejandro prepares more fruit on his steak. It does taste better that way. Caithias continues eating the cooked fruit offered to him. While Caithias eats, the young woman pushes herself upright. She looks around while she orients herself. Hello. We rescued you. You're safe and not going to be kept in a cage. Nikon offers the young woman his water skin. Maya takes the water skin and swirls the fresh water. I'm Nikan. We're going to be boarding a ship soon. We can take you home if you'd like. Malia offers roasted fruit to the female stranger. We promise. The food is good. I'm Malia. My name is Ashe. This is my brother, Nikan. I'm Alejandro. Most call me Ali. I'm called Maya. I'm Katheus. How did I get here? I was taken from my home, and then on a ship. I carried you here from the ship. The slave traders are gone now, so no need to worry. What? You, you carried me? Well, yeah. You were asleep, and I wasn't about to leave either of you on the slaver's ship. Thank you. 
I, I can never thank you enough or repay you. You don't have to repay me. Neither of you do. You're people. You deserve to be free. How was it? Nikon, Ishai, Alejandro and Malia return to the ship in single file. The two additions to those on board slowly walk onto the ship. They look around at the various sea dwellers and land dwellers on board. We ran into a slave ship, freed the two slaves and sank it. Instead of keeping the ship for yourself. I don't need a ship stained with blood. So, there's no magic here. Nothing worth looking into? Here, no. Nikon sets down the woven basket. We did overhear the slavers talking. Some of them saw magical creatures in the east. Such as what? Fairies, sprites, and sylphs. They failed to catch any, but they gave such a detailed recounting of what happened that we know exactly where to go. So this is a promising lead. Of course, Dad. Creatures made of magic are proof that magic is returning to the worlds, no? It is a start, and a believable one at that. Pythias and Maya look at their four acquaintances. They had not heard talk of magic before then. They knew nothing about why those four were on the island, nor why they had been on board the slave ship. They had not oriented themselves or asked many questions of them. What of this place? Oh, the island is beautiful, with tasty fruit. Uninhabited, except the animals. Xerxes eyes the woven basket. I see. Oh well. There are other new islands and land crawling with fairies for us to find, right? Yes. And more places to explore. Indeed there will be. Do you think we'll ever see them again? I have no doubts. Really? That man wants to know about magic. He's going to return to the people who know all about it. Should we keep them from returning? When he has caused us no harm? I suppose you have a point. Why did you ask? It was at least a little exciting to have strangers here. Even if nothing ultimately came of it. <laughs> at least not yet. What do you foresee is happening? Well, the spirits do like him. That's all I'll tell you for now. The surviving crew of the ship were at a tavern filled with sea dwellers. The patrons were a mix of sea dwellers by birth and by choice. That new island everybody's curious about. Don't go. Why not? Because it's cursed. Yeah, there's magic there, but it's all dark. It's all bad. What kind of bad? Some of our crew never came back. From where? To find food and fresh water. We got there by mistake at that. How was it a mistake? What happened? Storm. Blew us, of course. We had no idea where we were, and we were low on supplies. We only needed food and water. They were supposed to get some fruit and find water from a stream. None came back. They may have just been lost or eaten by an animal. I didn't believe in such things. Didn't? Uh, meaning you do now? You're damn right I do. That place is a death curse for anybody who steps foot there. You believe in magic? Given everything we can explain, yes. Magic is the only explanation for what happened there. Magic? Really? I don't know about that. Uh, did you meet a man there? We didn't meet anybody there. Why do you ask? You blindly spouting nonsense about magic reminds me of somebody. That's all. Who? I don't want to get into it. It's a long story. 